Today's show is pre recorded. Like a million bucks, but things in its cup. Mm-hmm. Y'all tell me who could it be for Steve Harvey? Oh, yeah. Everybody out there listening to me. Mm-hmm. Put your hands together for Steve Harvey. Put your hands together. Oh, 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 I sure will. Uh, good morning, everybody. You are listening to The Voice. Come on, dig me now. One and only. Steve Harvey. Got a radio show. Okay. Here we go. Um, I was working out. I was talking to a buddy of mine. And I was telling him something that Bishop T.D. Jakes told me one time. I heard him say it. He said, uh, I would hate to die and not do the thing that I was born to do. I would hate to die and not do the thing that I was born to do. Man, oh man, oh man. Man, that hit me like a pile pile of bricks, man. Because it made me feel so grateful that God has allowed me to live my life this way. Now, and I'm talking about grateful for all of it, the good, the bad, and the ugly. And I have had all of them. The person you see today, it ain't always who I was. It was on the inside of me, but it hadn't externalized itself, if that's a word. It hadn't been bought out. It was in here, but it was under development. Who I am today was a process. But like I said before, don't trip. He ain't through with me yet. Even today, I'm still an imperfect soldier for Christ. Today, I still fall short. Oftentimes. But I'll tell you what, I'm ever grateful for the life I have. And you know what? I want to encourage everybody today to explore your possibilities. I mean, man, explore your possibilities. Why would you not want to find out, discover, or know what it is God got for you? Why would you not want to achieve or accomplish all of your possibilities. Now, as I ask you this question, I want you to know that the devil is busy, that he plays mind tricks. So as you hear this, I already know he's saying to some of y'all, yeah, Steve, that's easy for you to say, but I didn't got myself in this situation right here. You ain't nothing too hard for God. Nothing. Nothing. And see, so as you listen to me, Try to, try to get your mind open to this. 
Why would you not want to explore all of your life's possibilities? What's possible with your life? And I'm talking about from right where you are right now. I'm not asking you to change. I'm not asking you to do anything. I'm telling you, this is a fact that God can get you from right where you are right now. Broken, misled, misguided, misunderstood, mistaken, all of that. Misfortunate, all of the misses you've been talking about in your life. You know, you, I missed the lottery. I, I missed my ride. They fired me. I, I missed the deadline. I didn't get it. Miss. People, people, people just miss they self to death. If you've been all the misses, God can get you from right where you are. God a home run hitter. I'm here to tell you that. He's a home run hitter. He's a put him over the wall whenever he want to all the time. And you can be a recipient of some of these home runs. He'll put the bat in your hand, but you got to swing. Now listen to me. You got to stop feeling sorry for yourself. You got to stop holding yourself down with beating yourself up. He won't hold you down about it if you don't hold yourself down about it. But I'm going to tell you one more time, the devil is busy. So what the devil do is he make you think you ain't worthy. He make you think that you've done something so despicable that you can't come back from it. He makes you feel like you so low you can't go up high. He knock you down and make you feel like you've been knocked down harder than anybody else. You can't get up. He roll you so deep down in that ditch you can't see over the edge. God can come get you from no matter where you are. I'm telling you, man, you ain't in no hole too deep for God. Magic Johnson to tell you that. Listen to me. You ain't in no hole too deep for God. Steve Harvey can tell you that. You ain't in a hole too deep for God. Tyler Perry can tell you that. I can name you some people. Bishop Jake can tell you that. I could tell you. Kenneth Ulmer can tell you that. Bishop Kenneth Ulmer. I could tell you some people. Kirk Franklin can tell you that. Donnie McClurkin can tell you that. I just know some people personally, man, that done been in a hole. I, Joel Osteen can tell you about it. I know some people, man, been down, been in a hole so deep. I bet you Paula Dean can tell you about it. See, and, but, but you know what, then here we go. See, we, see, see, you know, see, we don't, we don't like to talk about that because now we want everybody to pay extra hard for some mistakes they made. When clearly, and excuse me for being a new Christian, but there is a prayer that I've been saying since I was a little bitty boy, and it took me till I was a grown man to understand it. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. So see, it ain't my job to hold nobody down, to keep my knee on somebody's neck. Who am I? I'm going to need some forgiveness in a second here, probably today. See, so all this, you holding people down with the way you feel about them and she shouldn't have said this and she'll never get, I'll never support this again. Man, get up. Get up and get real. You for real? You think you ain't finna need forgiveness real soon? You ain't finna make a diabolical mistake in your life? You don't think you are? I have thousands of them. Probably gonna make a few hundred more before I get up out of here. So I've decided to be in the forgiving business because I, I want God to forgive my trespasses as I forgive those who trespass against me. You understand? See, excuse me for being a new Christian. I'm, I'm, I, get, I get tired of talking to, piss, to, to, uh, uh, to people, man, supposed to be saved and talking about they're Christian. I don't want that type of religion, man. I ain't in that no more. I ain't in that. You can call me wrong if you want to. Say it how you want to say it. I ain't in that no more. I ain't in all that. You can feel how you want to feel about me. But I got proof that God work in my life. You know, I, I can't hardly get it out sometimes when people ask me something about deep on, on the inside of me about my soul and how I used to be and, and my journey and my trip. Because people don't know the trip I've been on. Well, you may have been on one worse than me. But you know what? You ain't in a hole too deep God can't get you out of. Man, I, wish, I, want, I want people to remember that, man. God is a redeemer. He the great I am. So if you ain't got nothing now, what you asking for? You know, you might not have nothing because you ain't asking for nothing. Quit asking God to get you out of debt and ask God for a life of abundance. Then you take the money and you get out of debt. You keep asking to get out of debt. You keep being in debt to get out of. Come on, man. What you asking God for? 
I'm just tripping today. That's all. I'm sorry. I apologize. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, let me have your undivided attention just for a brief moment. There's something that's about to occur. Excuse me. Not cur, but occur or occur or go down or pop off or be about it. Whichever you choose to assimilate into your line of thinking. But it's about to go down, off up in him. I'm about to lose my mind <laughs> up in here, up in here. I want to thank the late, great DMX for that. That's all I know. So let's just get it started before I mess that up. Shirley Strawberry. Hey, good morning, Steve. Let's lose our minds today. Yeah. You don't Love really it. mean that, Shirley. I don't know. I, no, I really do that. today. Steve, oh, today's my birthday. I mean it. <laughs> Shirley, today Uh-oh. is your birthday? <laughs> I mean it, okay? <laughs> Shirley, today is your birthday? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, today's it's early in the morning. Birthday. Ain't like I'm too late. Happy birthday, Shirley Strawberry. <laughs> Thank you, Steve Harvey. I appreciate that. My bosom that. back, Thank buddy. You. We go back like Cadillac seats. <laughs> yeah, we do. <laughs> All the way from the year 2000, 21 years mm-hmm. of radio. 21 years. Wow. Ooh, That's Lord. longer than you and John L- London, wasn't it? Uh-huh. Longer than me and Doug Banks, anyone. Yeah, All the late, great them. Doug Banks. Yeah. You know mm-hmm. why that is, don't you, Shirley? Why is that, Steve? Please let me know. Cause you rolling with the big dog. <laughs> Stop all this messing around. You know the truth. <laughs> Carla Pharrell. Happy birthday to my girl, Shirley Strawberry. It's your birthday. It's your birthday. Thank you, hey, Carla. girl. That's my dog. <laughs> Happy birthday, Thank boo. Thank you, Carlotta. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, nephew Tommy. Top, top. Happy birthday. Shirley, how old? Oh, no, man. See, I already hear it in his voice. I knew it. I knew he was going to. I knew it. <laughs> when when is when, Okay, when is it not appropriate to ask a lady that? Never. Okay. Anytime it, you want yeah. to, dog. When, when does it stop? I mean, like, is it a certain age? I mean, how do I? Never mind. Okay. Try it now. Oh, he tried it. So I which thought it was birthday? a half ass effort, though. Yeah. Which birthday <laughs> is this? It's my birthday today. It's a good one. Yeah, today right. is the best day of my life. <laughs> all of that. The beginning of the rest of my life. All of that. Mm-hmm. Amen, sister. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah, celebrate. Praise the Lord. Girl. Amen. Uh-huh. Now, what year was was it? Was it now? That you was... <laughs> Come on. Man. Like my mama used to say, you ain't all the way stupid. Uh-huh. Way but, crazy. Yeah. I think but, he but, is. But though, try to this. pick like monumental. Did you see Martin Luther King funeral on TV? <laughs> right. And if I say yes, and you figure it out, or if I say no, yeah. you figure it out. Yeah. Oh, is that you the trick, Steve? When you saw uh-huh. it? Yep. But I, I'm too. I'm way too clever for that one, Carla. Did All you right. march? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, last summer. <laughs> Thank you, Carla. <laughs> I got you. <laughs> All right. We're moving on. Coming up at 32 minutes after the hour, it is Ask the CLO Chief Love Officer Steve Harvey in the building right after this. It's my birthday. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Time now for Ask the CLO Chief Love Officer Steve Harvey in the building. Steve, get ready. This one is from CD in Chicago, my hometown. Uh, CD writes, I'm a 39-year-old married woman, and I had an outside child during our third year of marriage. My husband was a cheater. He cheated on me before and after we got married, and I tried to play the same game, but I was careless. I had a son, and I have fallen in love with the father of my child. My husband begged me not to leave because he's a pastor, and everyone thinks we're such a perfect couple. I'm tired of living this lie. Would I be crazy to leave my husband in hopes of a fresh start with the other guy? Hmm. Well, it's one simple question you need to know. Does the other guy want to have a fresh start with you? Exactly. See? Facts. And how does he, how old is the son? Mm. Well, it doesn't say, but she had a child on their third year of marriage. Mm -hmm. That's the only question you need to know is, does this (laughs) guy you had this affair with 
want to have a new start with you. Mm. That's that's the problem. See, you you want a lot of stuff, but it ain't gonna happen. <laughs> that's the dilemma you have. The only dilemma you can. I I would suggest you go get a fresh start with this new guy. If the new guy wants you, does he know that's his baby? That's the other question. Exactly. See. And have you told I, him that? Does the pastor know that he raising another man's child? Uh oh. Hello. Mm. If you want me to stay, I'll be around. <laughs> How does that you call for that? I don't know. Don't slide the family stone. Really, really? Okay. <laughs> I'm right. about to go. All right. Mm. All right. We're we're moving on. La Curtis and La Curtis in Jacksonville <laughs> says, uh, "La oh. Curtis, you heard me. My wife and I have an RV to visit all of our grandkids in Georgia." It's on I got ready to tell you, that's an old ass name, La Curtis. La right. Curtis, yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's on our side yard. Uh, it's in our side yard and out of the way. My cousin is having marital issues, so he asked to stay in my RV one night after his wife put him out. I let him stay one night in it, and he left it a total mess. I could tell he had a woman in it, and it smelled like weed. I asked him to get it professionally professionally cleaned, but he said it was like that before he got in there. I can't have my wife in there after some bimbo has stayed there. How do I handle this CLO? Well, I mean, first of all, you got to get it clean because yeah. you let your cousin stay in there. Yep. Your cousin mm-hmm. trifling, he ain't going to clean it. So, you know, which is the reason why he getting put out of his own house anyway. <laughs> and he come yeah. right over there and have another woman in there. So now, you got to clean it, and I guess you've told your wife somehow that there was a woman in here, or your wife went out there and discovered it. But you got to get the thing professionally clean. You need some new bed spreads and all that. Yep, new bedding. You know. Yeah, you know, What's yeah, you got to get some new bedding, dog. Did that to yourself, partner. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you did. You knew your and, cousin yeah. was trifling. Trifling. And the yeah. Curtis, you you know better. Right. Call, you love that name, don't you, Lacurtis? Call, 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 call Lil Henderson ain't never been worth a damn. <laughs> the cousin's <laughs> cousin's name. <laughs> Him or Lavelle. <laughs> <laughs> All right, moving on. Here's another one you you might take a liking to, Steve. CLO. Vershawn. 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 <laughs> Vershawn in that's black. Wait a minute, it gets better. Vershawn in Kentucky. Okay. Yes. <laughs> All of that is good. Um, I'm a 33 year old single woman, and I'm attracted to a 67 year old man. He's wealthy and powerful, and the best part is he's divorced. I interact with him at work when he's at my office for corporate meetings. He doesn't know that I'm crazy about him, and I'm not sure how to approach him. I've heard a few men on social media telling us women that we don't deserve high-quality men if we're not really bringing anything to the table. Hmm. Wonder who Mm. that could be. Is this true? Should I shoot my shot or not? C-L-O. Let's go. I mean, go on and shoot your shot. But he's 67 and wealthy. Mm Mm-hmm. You 33. Uh, you don't think he knows that you had these feelings for him. Now, are you attracted to him or are you attracted to the fact that he's wealthy? Okay. Mm-hmm. Of course. That and you're looking for a come up. Because if he was just 67 and the dude driving the tow mode over there, I don't think you'd be that much in love with him. Even if he looked the exact same and he was a tow motor driver, I doubt very seriously, Vershawn, if you'd had the same feelings for him. <laughs> Vershawn. <laughs> In Kentucky. <laughs> All right. 34 so, years older than you. So should she shoot her shot, Steve? Yeah, go on. Shoot it. Mm. See what okay. he say. See what, set, see what he says. See what yeah. happens. Yeah, okay. yeah. You don't think he's seen this movie before, though? <laughs> <laughs> he old enough. He know he didn't seen it. Yeah, yeah. All right. Let's, yeah, he let's ain't move. just get this money. <laughs> let's move on to Caprice. Caprice in St. Louis says, I'm a 51-year-old school teacher and I teach dance at the school. I've always had a great body and I take pride in my nice muscular legs. 
When we have dance practice, most of the male teachers are in the gym or lurking around the gym when I'm in my dance attire. The white female principal has called me in several times saying I'm a distraction and I need to wear jogging pants instead of shorts. Is she out of line for insinuating that the way I dress is a distraction? Should I cover up more at practice? Mm. No, I don't think that she's a distraction. I think the men are out of line. Dance, dance mm-hmm. attire is appropriate. Yeah. And why you got to cover up? Cause these dudes in here can't pull themselves together. So you, you you're inappropriate, or they have lack of control and discipline and unprofessionalism. And she's wrong for requiring that of you, cause dancers wear dance outfits. Yeah. She is. Oh, yeah, so they fine, can't go so, so they can't go to, to the little kid practice either then, huh? <laughs> All right, CLO. Thank you. We gotta go though. Coming Hell up yeah, next. She's fine. <laughs> the crazy man, the nephew, run that prank back right after this. Back to the rack. <laughs> You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, coming up at the top of the hour, Miss Ann will be here with our national news. And we will talk about the new CDC mask mandate. That's right, I said CDC mask mandate. But right now, we're going to switch gears. And the nephew is here with Run That Prank Back. What you got for his Neff? You didn't fall, and you ain't getting no money, okay? <laughs> you didn't fall. How you know I you, didn't fall? Yeah, you ain't getting no money. Stop, <laughs> stop. <laughs> Claims adjuster. Oh, right. this limping and can't all like you hurt. Stop. <laughs> You're not getting no money. Let's go, cat dog. Hello. I'm trying to reach a uh, Glenda Ann, please. Yes, sir. How you doing? My name is uh, Brad. I'm actually with the uh, A and C department, accidents and conditions. Wanted to give you a uh, a call and see how you're doing this morning. I'm just fine. Great, great. Now um, I am the. Uh, the uh, accident and condition coordinator, the last person that it goes to before actually issuing out a check, and just wanted to give you a call and and, and see how everything is going. Uh, going, have you have you been to the doctor on your fall? And just just wanted to do a a follow up with you and make sure everything is okay. Yeah, everything is just fine, thank you. Have you needed to do any any rehabilitation work or anything like that? Uh, this is just a random procedure of all the notes that I have to write down, and and like I said, this is the final step of of getting you out of check. Now, the last I uh, heard, you were offered $2,000. Is that correct? If you work there, you go ask your supervisor. You, you would know all that if you worked there. Okay. Well, I, I, I'm just looking at the file that I have, ma'am. I don't have everything Okay, well, me, you got just... that wrote down, that's what they offered. Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, listen, here's what we're doing. Um, I've, I've also been brought some other records. Is this the first time you've actually had an incident like this? What? Is this the first time you've had an incident of actually falling? Yeah, that's my, yeah, that's my first time. Okay. Uh-huh. Well, actually, what we're doing, uh, looking over the records here, I've, I've got some uh, actual incidents that it seems like you've actually fallen several times in other places. And uh, what what I'm having to do here, ma'am, is let you know that I am not going to sign off on this at all. So the money that has been offered to you, I am no longer going to be, uh, I'm not going to confirm this check to go out to you. I don't think that there's anything uh, uh, wrong with you. I don't think that you have a problem. I think that there's something that you deliberately did in one of our stores. I could care less about what you think. What happened was the shit was on the floor. I fell. I'm gonna, they going to have to pay for the claim either way it go. No, we're not going to. Actually, ma'am, what I'm going to have to do is get you to come down and sign uh, an I'm agreement not coming nowhere. You, yes, I'm going to need you to come out and sign an agreement that you actually made this whole thing up, and I need that in writing. I'm, with I'm, sick- I'm not coming nowhere. Look, ma'am, I don't care if you come down or I have to come down and haul your ass in because I'm not signing over a check to you for somebody that deliberately laid down in the floor and act like something was wrong with them. You're a lying, deliberately done a damn thing. How exactly I, I, did I, 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 it, it was witnesses? You need to talk to them. I've spoken to every witness, and you know what, ma'am? You, you, Everyone you haven't thinks spoken you... to every witness because uh, uh, my friend was there. You haven't spoken to her. There's a lot of people that assume that you're lying. Well, I, I don't care what they assume. Ma'am, let me explain something. We can take this thing further. I even have you on video actually deliberately okay, laying well, down in the middle of the floor as you, if you okay, have well, actually now slipped. Okay, I know you're lying. 
No, now I'm not. I know you're lying. No, I am not, ma'am. And now listen, I know we're not going to give you two thousand. We're What's not going to give you two dollars. What's your name? My name is Brad <laughs> with the ANC department. Well, you won't be having a job too much for long because you a fool. No, no, I'm not a fool. I want to make yeah, sure that you understand. I want to make sure that you understand. No, I want to make something- sure you understand. That this is not something that you can do or continue to do. Now, I want to hear it out of your mouth. You tell me. Did you lay down on that floor deliberately? You crazy, no You think I'm finna sit here and tell and, you I deliberately laid down in a floor. Uh, or I am, I, am, I crazy, floor, am I crazy was, for you to sit here and tell floor, me the truth? I in a cell. That's it. That's all. No. That's you deliberately know. laid down in that floor, and you're deliberately trying to get $2,000 worth of money that does not belong to you. Well, you just reviewed the damn tape, then, and, and uh, you'll see what happened. Would you like for me to get authorities to come over, ma'am, and bring you in? I because what we're... I don't give a who you get. You get whoever you want to get. If I need to send authorities down there, ma'am, okay, to bring well, you... Okay, well, you, you send them all over here. I'm, I'm not scared of them either. I'm not, what I'm they going to expe- do? They're going to bring you in, and you're going to sign this form I have that you, you deliberately laid down on that floor. You a fool. The nerve of you black people. I'm not coming in. I'm not signing nothing. Now, what the you talking about? I don't know. I ain't never heard this you talking about. Now, I want you to bring your little narrow black behind in here so we can get this stuff rectified is what I want done. Are you crazy or dead, sir? You ain't the sharpest tool in the shed, I tell you that. I am not coming in. I don't know what the I would have to come in for. I want you to sign a form that you deliberately laid down in this floor, and it was all fictitious. Now, why the f*** would I do something like that and then go to jail? Why would you lay down in the floor in the, in, in the first place when you knew nothing was I wrong? told you I didn't do that. Yes, you did. Yes, you the did. F- was in front of you. I, I could I, look I, you I, in your eyes I, and man, tell when you're lying. I, I told you. I, 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 I told you what happened. That's it. That's all. Bye. Hey, can I say, let me say one more. Th- Hello? Call her right back. Hello. Hello. Ma'am, I don't want to continue to go back and forth look, with you. Look, look, look. You're really pissed. Look, I told you what happened. I'm not going to keep on telling you that. I don't know why the f*** you keep calling me. Let me speak to your damn supervisor. Let me say, well, first crazy. of all, ma'am, first what? of all, I am the supervisor. This is what I want. I you, think we you, can get this clear. Look, what the f***? I'm going to come in and sign the Here's what? what I want you to do. If you come if down you and sign it, I'll you go. If you think I'm going to come... And sign some papers saying I laid on the floor. It ain't none of that true. The was on the floor. I fell. That's it. That's all. Now, what the are you talking about? Have you been drinking? Have you been drinking, Are you listening? Have you been drinking? I want to see more things. got to do with anything. What I do on my own personal time is my business. Can Have I say you one more thing? Drinking? Don't keep calling me with that Okay, I'm going to say one more, th- one more thing and I'll hurt. let you my go. My back still hurt. And you talking about you ain't going to give me no money. You crazy the f- I am going to get some money. They should have had that s*** sh- up off the s*** sh- flow. Then okay. I wouldn't be having to go through none of this s***. You going to have I been drinking. Glenda, I'm going to say one more thing to you and then I'm going to let you go. What? This is Nephew Tommy from the Steve Harvey Morning <laughs> Show. You just got uh, pranked by your brother <laughs> JT. Who did it? <laughs> James. <laughs> James, baby, James. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, yeah, James, I'm going to get him when he get home. <laughs> Who is this? This is Nephew Tommy. How you doing, baby? You yeah, stand your ground, baby. Stand second, huh? Stand your ground, baby. Stand <laughs> it. <laughs> <laughs> you all right? Yeah, I'm fine. I'm fine. Okay. My pressure was going up a little bit, but now I'm, I'm fine now. And everybody here at the Steve Harvey Morning Show, we love you, Glenda. <laughs> okay, thank you. I love you, too. Somebody uh, <laughs> give it to me. Come on, give uh, it to me. I'll give it to you. You play too much. <laughs> you play too much. That's what pranking is, baby. You play too much. That's what the nephew was supposed to do. Keep it stupid right and early. If you love right, my stupid, you. blow your horn. Blow your horn. Thank you. Honk, honk. <laughs> All right, thank you, nephew. Coming up at the top of the hour, we'll have some entertainment and national news for you right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, so all morning long, we're going to be saying happy birthday to my girl, your girl, my girl, <laughs> Shirley Strawberry, right. all morning yes, long. Yes, yes, Happy <laughs> birthday. Whatever, nephew. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Carla. Thank you. You're welcome, Nev. 
Come on, get it out. I know you have something. I know you got something. Got, let it go. No. Let it go. Uh-uh. I, I'm good. I'm good. I just don't know which one it is, but we'll figure it out throughout the morning. Uh-huh. We'll get to okay, it. Okay, you're going to be doing the math and everything. All right, here I'm we gonna go. I'm going to do the math. All right. uh, Thank you, Carla. Time now for trending medical news. There is a new mask mandate because yesterday the CDC recommended that fully vaccinated people begin wearing masks indoors again in places with high COVID transmission rates. The updated guidance comes ahead of the fall season with the Delta variant. Uh, That is expected to cause another surge in new coronavirus cases. Experts say COVID prevention strategies remain critical to protect people from the virus, especially in areas of moderate to high community transmission levels. President Biden will announce Thursday um, that federal, that's tomorrow, that federal employees get vaccinated. Okay. The president also said the biggest protection we have against the Delta variant is the vaccination. Meanwhile, a restaurant in Huntington Beach, California said they will only serve unvaccinated customers. And, uh, wow. What? (laughs) Really? (laughs) They said, what? All right. We really live in two Americas now, uh, the vaccinated and the unvaccinated. Okay, which one are you? Yeah. I I had a friend text me today uh, to tell me that he got his first uh, dose of the vaccine today. He said, because of you, Shirley, because of you. And I'm like, thank you. I'm glad you did it. I'm so glad you did it. You know, good. Because I've been telling him, please go get vaccinated. You know, go. It's going to help, you know, even if you get it. Hmm. I saw him interviewing people on the news that, that were actually in the hospital and, and, you know, laying there with COVID saying they wish they would have gotten that shot. They wish they would have gotten yeah. it. They did that on CNN yesterday. I mean, that's, that's a lot crazy, of people. Man. Yeah, yes. in I'm hindsight. I'm so glad I got and, it. And, you know, so my, 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 my good friend that was in ICU, he just got moved to a regular room. Well, that's oh, good. good news. He's on Prayer the road works. to recovery. Good. good. Yes, yes, sir. Steve. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, that's a good thing. At least he, he's still in the hospital. Mm-hmm. But you know, going to a regular room—that's that's, that's a good thing, man. Uh huh. I mean, it's just we keep saying it's some of this is unavoidable. You guys, if you just take yeah. the vaccination and and you know, I was talking to somebody yesterday, and they were saying, you know, people research on social media. They look up all the reasons as to why not to mm-hmm. take the shot. They're looking mm-hmm. for things to match on how they feel. So and that this was actually here. Dave, our engineer. And he was saying, why don't people just take that time and pick up the phone, call your health care provider, call your doctor, yeah. get some medical advice. Don't just believe mm-hmm. misinformation, yes. you know, that you're yeah. seeing on social media. Mm-hmm. This could save your life. Yeah. This is serious. Yeah. I mean, it's not like we've never been vaccinated before. Everyone who's been to school, you got, you had to take vaccines shots. You had to take get your vaccines. Yeah. Well, Why you know, is it we, this we, one? We oh. have so much social media. That's what I mean. Misinformation. Mm-hmm. That has misinformation in it. Yes, and we and, we're, and we're falling into it. Mm-hmm. And we got to stop this foolishness, man. Listen, y'all, we got to get vaccinated. This thing is real out here. Yes. This yes, thing is. is real. Tell them, Steve. Yeah. This is real. Come on, Steve Harvey Nation, please. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, Steve, let's move on to the headlines. You know, hopefully. Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Ann Tripp. Thank you. And, of course, the first headline is happy birthday to sweet Shirley Strawberry, everybody. This is Ann Tripp with the news. Well, in Washington, not so sweet, very, very sad. On the first day of the testimony before the House Committee investigating the Capitol Hill riots, Metro Police gave emotional accounts of what happened to them that day. Officer Michael Fannin, for one, talked about his injuries as well as his utter disappointment with Republican lawmakers who say that Trump supporters acted more like tourists than terrorists. I had been beaten unconscious and remained so for more than four minutes. At the hospital, doctors told me that I had suffered a heart attack. And I was later diagnosed with a concussion, a traumatic brain injury, and post-traumatic stress disorder. What makes the struggle harder and more painful is to know so many of the people I put my life at risk to defend are downplaying or outright denying what happened. I feel like I went to hell and back to protect them, but too many are now telling me that hell doesn't exist or that hell actually wasn't that bad. The indifference shown to my colleagues is disgraceful. 
Well, one of the only two Republicans on the committee, uh, Wisconsin Senator Liz Cheney, she points out that uh, she differs with the Democrats on policy. And in fact, her voting record is usually always right down the line uh, with the Republicans. But she says she agrees that probing all things around the January 6th insurrection should be paramount. If those responsible are not held accountable and if Congress does not act responsibly, this will remain a cancer on our constitutional republic. We will face the threat of more violence in the months to come and another January 6th every four years. Okay, as you just heard from Shirley and the others, the nation's masking rules are changing again. Yes, again, the director of the Centers for Disease Control is Dr. Rochelle Walensky. The CDC's updated recommendations come as a devastating wave of COVID infections are seen in every state. Uh, Dr. Walensky lays it out. CDC recommends fully vaccinated people wear masks in public indoor settings to help prevent the spread of the Delta variant and protect others. Vaccinating more Americans now is more urgent than ever. The highest spread of cases and severe outcomes is happening in places with low vaccination rates and among unvaccinated people. And those states, especially Missouri, Arkansas, Mississippi, and Florida. By the way, good news for all you munchies. Hundreds of Frito-Lay workers have ended their nearly three-week strike after ratifying a new contract, so munch on. Now back to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Well, yesterday, Simone Biles withdrew from Team USA Gymnastic Finals at the Olympics in Tokyo. Simone told her teammates that she is dealing with some things, and she didn't want to hurt herself or the team. Simone went on to say to put your mental health first. Take a listen, please. Um, put mental health first because if you don't then you're not going to enjoy your sport and you're not going to succeed as much as you want to so it's okay sometimes to even sit out the big competitions to focus on yourself because it shows how strong of a competitor and person that you really are rather than just battle through it I respected that and they went on to win the silver that t- uh, and, and that's team. big and we got to congratulate mm-hmm. the team mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. yeah yeah. They won so silver, or uh, uh, the team won silver? Yes. Yep. They did win the silver yesterday, yes. Without her. Yes. Mm-hmm. But yeah. she was right there cheering them on as they were doing it. She yeah, stayed and out helping there them. them and supporting them. I mean, what a good t- sport and team player she is, you know? Right. Mm-hmm. Well, you know what, Steve? She encouraged them. She told them they had trained their entire lives for this moment. She had been to the Olympics, but... Mm-hmm. She just had some, she was second guessing herself and warm ups, and she just wasn't in the right headspace and she didn't want to hurt the yeah. team. Yeah. And uh, yeah. she decided to I, pull herself from yeah. it and told them to Because, you know, get she it. wasn't doing the. Her uh, for that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. She was making mistakes I had never seen her make in yeah. the uh, early going, you know, stepping yeah. completely off the mats mm-hmm. three times. Mm-hmm. Right. You said yeah. that, yeah. Something yeah, was heavy her, on her mind. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think, you know, it was a lot of that posing with the goat and making her feel like she was unbeatable. Pressure. It's it's Uh a lot of pressure. Uh Yeah, it is. And didn't she have the goat, uh, like, symbol on one of her uh, uniforms, on the shoulder of one of her uniforms, I saw? I mean, you know, they did that. Yeah. Yeah. They made her some slippers with the goat on it. She Mm -hmm. didn't do that. Yeah. But but the point of the matter is, she is the goat. She, she is. is the best at she it. She is yeah. the goat. Yeah. If she ever, if she never tumbles she, again, that's right. That's <laughs> right. Still, exactly. She could have stopped. She is, yes. Yeah, she still is the goat. Yeah, no matter what she does. So that's a good love choice. Her for that. that's a good choice. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. She, she did it for herself and for her team. You know, because yeah, if she stayed yeah. in there, they may not have gotten that silver though. Mm-hmm. Right. But but anybody that's got a problem with that, something wrong with you. Yeah, yes. and yeah, and it's they the do. damn Olympics. Mm-hmm. There ain't <laughs> nobody getting paid on this. <laughs> 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 Always keeping it one hundred, Steve yeah, Harvey. Stop all this mess. <laughs> <laughs> all right, coming up at thirty-four minutes after the hour, we'll have more on this Wellness Wednesday as we discuss taking off for self-care right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Well, guys, today is Wellness Wednesday, and we're talking about the GOAT, Simone Biles. And GOAT, in case you don't know, is greatest of all times, okay? It's an acronym. Yes. Greatest of all times. The uh, GOAT. Yeah, Simone Biles. We're talking about mental health and self-care. So, Steve, you talk about hustling, grinding, working out, working hard. 
Um, but when do you know, I mean, really know in your spirit that it is time to take a break, time for Steve, some Steve time? Well, you know, my, my temperament changes. You know, I get a little bit more, you know, on edge. I'm not as, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not as uh, quick. Um, I, I start feeling like, I'm having to do a lot of stuff instead of getting to do a lot of stuff. And once I start feeling that way a few days out of the week, then I know, okay, man, you need a break. Mm -hmm. You you got to turn off this motor, man, because you got it cranked up a little bit much. And then your body tells you stuff too, man. If you're not sleeping well, you know, Mm -hmm. because your mind is not turning off, you know, a, a, a lot of times when you go to sleep and you wake up and you still feel tired, tired. it's because mm-hmm. your mind didn't rest. Mm-hmm. You know, you had, you know, you could be in bed and your mind just be dreaming and going oh, through yeah. everything That's that you true. got to do tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Right. You don't cut it off. You don't shut mm-hmm. shut down, right? Mm-hmm. No. Man. So, so th- that's when you know that it is time to take a break, time for some self-care, time to chill, time to, you know, you know how you do when you vacation and stuff like that. So, yeah, that's yeah. good advice. Yeah. And and if you can't do that, you know, go on a yacht like Steve. Self-care, you know. <laughs> and, and fly private jets and, uh, and all just, of that, that, that you was, know. That was slap in the face. That was, <laughs> that was exactly you know, do your works. version of it. Do do your version of it. But the, the important thing, the message is to take time for you. 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 I have a question for you guys, for everybody. Do you all think that, I think that social media brings about a lot of stress for people. I think that people are trying to live like the Joneses or or do what they mm-hmm. see or what they think how other people mm-hmm. are living we're, and they're adding stress. Go ahead, Tom. I think we're too, we're too addicted to it. It's like we gotta, you gotta look at it every day. You gotta go see what people are saying. You, sometimes I have to take a break from social media and say, all right, I'm not looking at that this week. I don't mm-hmm. want to look at it. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. sometimes you got to take a break from it because if not, you just get pulled in. And, yeah. and every other second you want to see what somebody's saying. Here's this response. Here's what they posted. Pull up on it. I yeah. know. I, the other day when I saw Cardi B's post, when she posted all those Birkin bags, remember that? And every mm-hmm. different color and mm-hmm. fabric and all of that. I was like, dang, I don't even have one. So, right. You know, I did. <laughs> Me neither. <laughs> <laughs> neither do I. But that's yeah, what I, I mean. Feeling, it's just I was so feeling much... some kind of way. Yeah. yeah oh, I yeah. want one, you know? Yeah. <laughs> uh-uh, yeah I, I, I think that. all like Tommy was saying, the social media thing, though, I think people put so much stock in it that mm-hmm. they allow it to, to dictate to them. Yeah. And you have to understand what social media is, man. If you look at the number of likes you get on a picture or the number of views, it's really minuscule mm-hmm. in the total scheme of how many people are really in this world. And if you oh, look yeah. at those number of views and likes and you broke down the demographic, the, the, uh, the demographics of it, you'd really keep moving on because half them people ain't old enough to tell you a damn thing. <laughs> mm. Right. That's true. <laughs> yes. And they got little sure. grown-up ass opinions with their little young stupid ass. <laughs> and but so, that's what drives millennials and Gen Xers. That's what drives them, you know, uh, social media. We didn't have that growing up, but that's that's what drives them. They yeah. they can't live without it. They're always on their phones, yeah. you know. I think that adds to the pressure, though. And I it does, and right. to the it's stress of, the of it all. Yeah. I, I really, really do. And, and what about your eyes? You know, just think about something like that. Your eyes, watching that constantly all the time. Yes. You know, yes. you gotta you gotta step back from this stuff. You really, really do. Self-care. All right. Yeah, self care. All right. It's important. Coming up next, it is the nephew with today's prank phone call right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Coming up at the top of the hour, right about four minutes after, it's my strawberry letter for today. The subject, my sister and my mister. Mm -hmm. Mr. Sister. You'll see. We'll get into it in just a bit. Right now, the nephew, you hear him, is in the building with today's prank phone call. Nephew, what is it today, please? Uh, Your barbecue ain't right, okay? 
Yo, barbecue ain't right. Let's go. Hello? Hello. I'm trying to reach Gerald. Yeah, this is Gerald. Uh, who's calling? May I ask? Hey, Gerald, this this is Calvin, man. You um you live a couple blocks over from me, man. I've been I've been I just wanted to reach out to you. One of the neighbors gave me your number, man. And uh I just um, wanted to tell you I've been I don't want no um I'm sorry, I don't want no subscriptions or nothing, brother. I might as well cut you off right now. A uh, a uh, what now? Subscriptions. You calling about some subscriptions or something? No, 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 no. I'm a neighbor, my man. I'm 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 just a couple blocks over from you. No, I got your number from one of the neighbors. I was I was calling to let from you know who? I've been smelling you I've been smelling your barbecue, man. That's what I was calling about. Oh yeah. Yeah. Man, you you've been grilling every day, seem like over there. I've been smelling the smoke in there. You 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 over there so, putting it down, huh? I mean, I, I think thank you for the compliment, but um yeah, I mean now you say I, I mean I had nothing else to do but cook, you know, in these times. I mean I might as well do what I'm good at, you know. Who 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 gave you my number though? Uh, it's a guy on your street. Uh, last name Edwards. I can't remember the dude first name. I call him Edwards. I think he lives on your street. I'm not sure. Yeah. Uh, so what you what you what you cook and smoke? Man, you know? I I cook. I burn a little bit. You know that's and that's why I call like like you know from one barbecue brother to another. I was just reaching out. I said, man, this dude right. burning over there. So you you putting it in, man? What what, what all you been cooking since since uh well, since we've been locked I mean, down? I mean, you know, I've kind of been, you know, experimenting a little bit. I've been doing some, uh, you know, doing some, some different woods, uh, mm. uh, cherry. You know, I kind of mix it in, a little bit of hickory. You know, it kind of all right. depends on what I'm cooking, whether it's some fish, it's, you know, chicken. I mix it up every now and then. But sometimes I have lately been experimenting with this mesquite. Yeah, I mean, the flavor mm. just fall off the bone. Well, no, I'm out no, every no. day about after four or three. Yeah, that's that's you know, when I've been smelling the smoke because you know. your, your, smoke, your smoke come into my yard. You know, I'm 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 two blocks over. Your smoke carrying a good distance, wow. man. But yeah, but it's all right though. It's yeah. all right. I've but but, but let me. I've been, I've been soaking my chips and all that stuff. I mean, you know, I've been just trying some new techniques. You know, uh, nothing yeah. crazy. I've, yeah. Well, let, I, let, let me go say this got though. You going crazy? Huh? What's up? What's uh, up? No, it ain't got me going crazy. To be, to be completely honest with you, bro, it's, it's kind of got me f-ed up. You f-ing your meat up so damn bad, dog, that I'm sitting here smelling this. Sh- and I'm trying to figure out what are you doing? You know, you you soaking this, you using cherry. Oh, no, hey man, if you ain't putting no no whoa, pecan whoa, 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 or no whoa, 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 oak in there, it's no you you a dude on the grill that don't know what why, the f- you doing. And that's my why you got cuss at me? You, I mean, I cause dog, you 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 uh, uh, from a real barbecue man, you don't know what the. F- you doing? No, well, and that's that's. I, oh, well, I am. A, I, I've been in competitions. You talking about a real barbecue? Man. Ain't no. I mean, I didn't grow. Ain't no way you have been in no damn it. competition for no barbecue, oh, dog. Oh, 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 how you, Not I, with I, the. I, shit I'm smelling, I, I, man. Look, I, I I'm talking to you because I'm bored as. And you just gonna start cussing at me and talking about my. How, how you know what it is? You haven't even. But dog, dog, I can I can smell it. I can smell no, wood in the air no, and know and know what's right and what's wrong. It smell good, and then you just come out of nowhere cussing. I mean. I know we all going crazy right now, but no. Cut that hey man, hey man, listen. Here what I'm going. I'm going to say this here, brother. You ain't, you ain't got cuss that. Okay, cool, that cool. I ain't gonna cuss no more. Cool. But let me say this: Don't put nothing else on that. Mo- so now you don't put nothing else on that grill. I swear to you, for at least a month. I, I don't want to smell your smoke no more, dog. How you gonna tell me what to do? You don't even know me like that. You are just gonna have to smell it. I mean, I'm just saying. I'm two blocks over, and I'm tired of smelling your smoke. I'm tired of smelling it. You don't well, know what you're doing. I don't know don't put nothing you. else on that pit well, for at least that. another I'm month. I don't know what to tell you. If I put some rotten f-ing tomatoes on there and I, I want to smoke, you're going to smell it. How about that now? Okay. All this hey, man. You talking? No, 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 no. I'm, I'm bored out of my f-ing mind. you calling me talking shit. Hey, dog. I don't know how to because, cook. Because you got the I smoke in the air no, that smell no, like shit. No, no, you don't know what you're right doing. I do know what I'm doing. Have you tasted it? My shit. I, I don't want to taste it. I don't bone. want my shit off the bone. I've been experimenting. Okay, okay. I, did, okay. I did put some applesauce. See that right there? What the f- is that? You did what with some applesauce? I, you, hey man, don't put see, shit else the article. on that grill. Okay, it, 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 I, I'm it, gonna send you some YouTube videos so you can learn how to barbecue. Cause you gonna quit f-ing the neighborhood up, dog. Yo, don't tell me what to do. They don't sit right with me. I ain't got no job right now. You telling me what to do? I ain't got shit in the house, and you just gonna tell me what to do with my food? If your food is tight, why are you wasting it on the my barbecue? My food is people? tight, brother. Just quit. Uh, uh, no, 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 I'm no, trying no. to figure out how to stop your ass from cooking, stop man. My-
from doing what? Living? No, what cooking doing, out man? on the grill and everybody got to smell some shit that we know ain't being cooked right. I'm a barbecue man. I know what I'm doing. You don't, and it bothers me. So that's well, why so I got, you got your number. You got a saw. So what, what competition you want? I don't have to be in no competitions. Sound everybody like to come to get my barbecue. Well, who, who that, the bums? No, I ain't no. Okay. Hey, man. <laughs> hey, man, listen. You want let, let's me, Let's brother. finish this this way. Both. If you put something else on the grill, I'm going to come around there and whoop your ass. You ain't going to do s***. <laughs> go do s***. How about that? <laughs> man, who the f*** is this on my damn phone? <laughs> <laughs> Who the f*** is calling me with this bull Hey, man. <laughs> hey, this, <laughs> this nephew Tommy from the Steve Harvey Morning Show. I your cousin. Got me your... talking about my <laughs> beats and words and and sauces and your cousin, you? your cousin Trey yeah. got got me to prank that you, man. That mother <laughs> came over here and got a plate yesterday. I should have knew something was happening. <laughs> they were over in the corner snicking with my aunt. Good for nothing. <laughs> now I'm gonna tell you right now, he no, he ain't allowed over here at all. I'm, he he ain't allowed over here at all. No more. We didn't social distance his ass. He can hashtag it in the front and the back. Hey, man, like, you got to tell me this right here, right here, right now. Gerald, what is the baddest, and I mean the baddest, radio show in the land? Come on, brother. The Steve Harvey Morning Show, man, with this nonsense. <laughs> Talking about my food and sauces. How y'all feel about it? <laughs> How do we feel about it? I mean, I'm, 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 I'm real when it comes to barbecue. I'm real about it, okay? <laughs> so I'm serious real. about this. I'm real right? serious <laughs> when it comes to barbecue. And if your cue uh, ain't right, you. I'm telling I will you. call you out, okay? I don't know. What is this? Uh, 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 you know, because there's some people out there boiling briskets for a minute, then put them on the grill. What are you doing? What is that? <laughs> Who do that? That's a no no time. Definitely. Balling no ribs and brisket. Who do that? See, see what do you do that cook at? Right there. You too judgmental, Tommy. Mm-mm. I don't, none of them have time for that. Uh-uh. <laughs> you the uh-uh. person that put a steak in the crock pot. Yes, you. Stop. With the work. rice together. <laughs> <laughs> that almost ended my marriage. Those are painful memories right there. <laughs> <laughs> not, not about to get the papers. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So, hey, laying in the cut, uh, uh, I'm mm-hmm. adding some dates, so um, I can't talk about it yet. Wait, wait, when I sign the paperwork that I'll talk about it, I ain't supposed to be talking about it right now, but y'all get ready. I'm just going to give a hint. Uh, Florida. Florida. Just stay, stay, in, stay tuned. Florida. I'm going to let y'all know where, where I'm coming. Just stay tuned. Paperwork be done by tomorrow. Okay? Oh. That's all. Yeah. It's so serious. It's all serious. Yes. Yeah. These dates well, are serious. Is signed. Uh-huh. These dates are You got to get that done first, okay? It's first. okay? It's a secret where you going. Yeah. Yeah, right now. But, you know, tomorrow it won't be because, you know, I've been in signing papers, you know, by oh, this evening. the ink will be dry. Uh-huh. Yeah. I got you. Yeah. I got you. Okay. Of, yeah, yeah, yeah. Matter of fact, it's like two cities. Yeah, I'm going to drop two of them on you by tomorrow. Oh, yeah. oh you going on tour? <laughs> Mm, What's happening? I'm gonna drop two of them on you by tomorrow. Watch me, watch me, watch me, girl. It's Your together. uncle taught you well. Yeah. It's back open, and time mm-hmm. it back out there. Okay. Mm-hmm. Got a mask. Well, I wear a mask. I mask up all the way there. Mask yeah. on, baby. That's you right. Got all, a mask all the way to all the way to the stage. Then mask off. As soon as I get off stage, <laughs> right. mask back up. All right. All right. Well, congratulations. We'll we'll look forward to hearing from you tomorrow about where you're going to be. Coming up next, Strawberry Letter subject, my sister and my mister. We'll get into it right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Happy birthday to our girl, Shirley Strawberry. Today is her birthday. Get busy, girl. Happy birthday. Thank you, Carla. Friend. Thank you, guys. But oh, which, thank you, thank which, you, thank which one is it, though? Is that going to worry you all day? Yes. <laughs> How has, do I has, look? Has, has Sydney Portier Fabulous. come to dinner? Has Sydney Portier uh, come to dinner? Stop she trying to ask. figure out her age. Her she age, knows. right? That is so rude. <laughs> but that's my friend. I love him. All right, here we go. Subject. Uh, okay, time now for today's strawberry letter. I almost skipped all, all over that on my birthday. If you need advice on relationships, dating, work, sex, parenting, and more, please submit your strawberry letter to steveharveyfm.com and click submit strawberry letter. You hear that? Who knows? This letter could be yours. It could be. Write us. We'll try to help you. Buckle up and hold on tight. We got it for you. Here it is, a strawberry letter. 
Thank you, nephew. Subject, my sister and my mister. Dear Stephen Shirley, a year ago, I found out that my husband cheated on me with my sister. We were married for nine years, so it was not unusual for him to have a great relationship with my sis. They joked around and would play fight like they did not like each other. And all along, I thought it was cute, and I had no idea that that was foreplay. (laughs) I caught them in our garage one day years ago behind the car, and my husband jumped up and told me they were trying to scare me. (laughs) Boy, was I stupid back then. I started to hear (laughs) rumors. Yes, I started to hear rumors from other family members about how close my husband and my sister were, and my female intuition kicked in. I started monitoring his text messages and his email, but didn't find anything. Then my nephew told me about the WhatsApp and uh, how he and his friends can send private messages on it without his mom seeing them. I found the app on my husband's phone, and that's where all of the messages were. He had set up a lunchtime quickie with my sister at her salon, and little did he know, I was coming too. She has one of those salon suites in a building, so there's not much privacy in there. I could barely see them through the blinds, but I saw what I needed to see. My husband had my sister bent over the shampoo bowl, and I almost passed out. I stayed until it was over, and when he walked out, I threw my my coffee on him and asked him to move out of our house as soon as possible. I have not seen or spoken to my sister in a year. She and my ex-husband still mess around, but I'm happy and dating. I've forgiven him and my sister, but my sister can't face me still and um, talk about what she's done to me. Life is short, so how do I get her to talk to me? Please advise. Wow. All right, let me see. All right. Uh, This woman, your sister, slept with your husband on more than one occasion. You saw her bent over the shampoo (laughs) bowl with your husband. Glory. And you're upset. (laughs) What you say? Glory. (laughs) Yeah. And you're upset because she won't talk to you? What? (laughs) Huh? (laughs) What what do you want to talk to her about? Um, Hmm. Why she did it? How she did it? Why is she still messing around with him? That's really the only, only conversation you guys can have at this point. And, and look, I, I, I definitely believe in forgiveness. I do. And truly commend you for extending the olive branch to your sister and realizing that life is short. I just don't get why you think your sister would want to talk to you. I mean, she's still sleeping with your ex. You say she's scared to face you, but I I, I think she simply doesn't give a darn about whether you guys speak or not, or, or if you are sisters or not. If she did, after you busted them, she would have stopped seeing them or tried so- seeing him or tried somehow to make it up to you. She would have tried something. But it's been a whole year, and you've got nothing from her. It, it says to me... Uh, Uh, Not that she's scared like you think, but it says that just because someone is related to you, like your blood sister in this case, doesn't mean they won't sleep with your man. So please, sis, I mean, go on, continue to live your best life and love your sister from a distance. Steve? The letter should be my trifling sister and my (laughs) mister. Yeah. And that's all it is. I really can't add anything to what Shirley said. She covered the letter exactly the way it should be covered. I don't don't know what you want. Look, if you... Okay, let me just go. You said that you was married nine years ago and you found out your husband cheated on you with your sister. Okay, now, and y'all was married nine years, so it was unusual for him to have... A great it wasn't unusual for him to have a great relationship with your sister. They joke around and would play flight like they ain't like each other. That's how kids do in school. Yeah. I, t- I act like I ain't like y- Yvonne Chuck when I was in elementary school. But Who? Lord have Yvonne Chuck. Oh, Lord have mercy, thing. girl. Uh-huh. That girl had plaits in her hair, dog. And some barrettes. Blue and yellow. Plaits. Oh, man. Tommy, it might be my birthday, but I've never had plats, okay? <laughs> so, uh, 
So now, <laughs> figure it out. Come on, Steve. <laughs> I didn't know what to do with a girl uh, when I was eight, but I just wanted her. <laughs> what did you want? I mean, what does that mean? What's going eight? on? Yeah, at wanted eight. <laughs> I wanted her. You know, you know, I, I wanted her like I wanted a bike. You know. Oh. I, well, but that was different. Shouldn't have said bike. I wanted her like I wanted a new baseball glove. <laughs> I just wanted her to be my friend. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Anyway. She didn't know you were alive, did she? Oh, yeah. yeah she knew I was alive. Oh, she did? <laughs> I was stuttering, though, so I couldn't get to Oh, it. yeah. All right. Well, hang on, Steve. We'll have part two of today's Strawberry Letter, My Sister and My Mister, at 23 minutes after the hour, and we will get Steve's part two right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, come on, Steve. Let's recap today's strawberry letter. The subject, my sister and my mister. Well, your sister, uh, your trifling sister is messing around with your husband. You found out you, you all were together nine years and it was, wasn't unusual for them to be close. So you say they would play fight and act like they ain't like each other. You thought it was cute. You had no idea it was foreplay. Then one day you caught him in the garage uh, behind the car and your husband jumped up and told they were trying to scare me. Boy, was I stupid back then. What is y'all doing back behind the car trying to scare me? How did they, how did they do that, Steve? Uh, you know, they back there, they kissing real hard behind the car. Go, boo! <laughs> Ooh, we tried to scare you. You caught us. God, dog. Uh, let's go on back in here, girl. Right. So, uh... I started hearing rumors from other family members about how close they were, and your fem- female tuition kicked in way too damn late. I started monitoring his text message, and we couldn't mm-hmm. find And Then your nephew told you about what's happened, how he and his friends can send private messages without his mama seeing them. So you found the app on your husband's phone, and that's where all the messages were. He had set up a lunchtime quickie with my sister at her salon, and little did he know I was coming too. She got one of them salon suites in a building, so there ain't mm-hmm. much privacy in there. I could barely see them through the blinds, but I saw what I needed to see. My husband had yeah. my sister bent over the shampoo bowl, and I almost passed out. Oh, you did. But I stayed there until it was over, because he huh? was bringing it. No, I mean, I'm sorry. Not that's in that not letter. in that letter. That, 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 but I'm, that's, I'm, that ain't in that Excuse uh-huh. me. I stayed until it was over, and when he walked out, I threw my coffee on him. That's good if the coffee was hot, but that depends on how long she was over that shampoo bowl. Because your coffee might have been cold and didn't have that much effect. Mm -hmm. So, And I think it was cold because you ain't mentioned nothing about him going blind or nothing like that, which I'm pretty sure was your whole goal. Wait a minute. Can you back up? You said it was cold. Cause it yeah, I think the coffee out. was cold because they was in there on that shampoo out. bowl for a long ass time. <laughs> it wasn't as quick as you thought it was going to be because the coffee was cold. Because when you throw the coffee on him, he didn't he didn't run or holler or nothing. He just stood there. <laughs> he thought it was iced coffee from Starbucks. Because uh-huh. yeah. <laughs> she, she had been all over that uh, shampoo bowl. He was putting in work. And so then, anyway, I, and I asked him to move out of our house as soon as possible. Now, I've not seen or spoken to my sister in a year. She and my ex-husband, so you done got a divorce, still mess around, but I'm happy in dating. I've forgiven him and my sister, but my sister still can't face me and talk about what she's done to me. Life is short, so how do I get her to talk to me? So you want to talk about she can't face you and talk about what she's done to me. So you want to confront her about it, which I do definitely understand. Because I would want to know, too, what the hell you was thinking. But we're going to talk after I, after I get mine in, though. Yes. After yeah. what? <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm going to get something in before we talk. Uh-huh. And so I don't really understand. I agree with Shirley with what you want to talk to her for. But Shirley said forgiveness is a good thing. Yeah. Uh, I'm not going to forgive you right away. Because of what it was. That's yeah, so, so you, and yeah. you saw it. The shampoo yes. bowl? Yes. Yeah, that shampoo bowl, you can't even go in there and get your hair done no more. Ever. <laughs> <laughs> not at that bowl. Yeah, you, not not you can't even go in that damn salon. Them the blinds you were sneaking, looking in. Yeah. No. 
No. Just the chair he had his foot on. <laughs> Give us the visual, Steve. Yeah, Why don't see, you? when you in there, that shampoo bowl, and she had her head on that, that side with the loop in it. Oh, that little dip. That yeah, little that dip. little dip. She had her head in there. Too much. Her throat was on that, and he had one of his knees up in that chair facing the bowl. Because he was going for leverage. And he was in there, and then he had it. One hand was on that water hose, that one single <laughs> nozzle that just spray, and he was just refreshing himself every now and then. But, but Steve, how was much product what? did they knock down off the shelf, though? <laughs> Girl, it was so much luster curl on that damn floor. <laughs> no, activator. No, activator. Girl, I had luster curl in there, had some pro line, because you know they, they old. They had pro line in there and some more. Uh, and some, and, and, yeah, and, 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 and some Crown Raw. <laughs> and then they had a look, some of that Blue Jaw Bergamot. <laughs> you know, they was. Bergamot? Yeah. And this then wasn't somebody a had. Salon. This was a beauty shop. Yeah, this is a beauty shop. This ain't no <laughs> salon. This was old ass <laughs> people in here. And uh, he felt a little burning on his baby finger because his baby finger had got got in that sofa eight and he didn't know it. <laughs> That baby thing was over there in that soft eight just burning. And he thought oh, he had touched that flat iron, but it was that damn soft eight. You're stupid. And then she turned around because he was going too good. She turned around and swung at him, but she had her hand in some Glover's mane, and that menthol got in his eye. He thought he had a head rag on. He didn't know what to do. His head was wrapped go up. crazy. <laughs> We got to go. Post your comments on today's Strawberry Letter at Steve Harvey FM on Instagram and Facebook. And please check out the Strawberry Letter podcast on demand. Coming up at 46 minutes after the hour. I don't think he's, I don't think he's done. Uh, part three Girl. of the Strawberry Letter. My sister Uh-oh. and my mister. He's got more in this beauty shop. We'll be back right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, Steve. Here we are, back at part three of this you know, letter. I, I, this, this letter, my see, my lip mister. I want y'all to know this was not what? a Steve. salon. This was a beauty shop. Yes. Yes. Old school, yeah. This old was a beauty school. shop. They older. Uh-huh. And she went out there looking in them blinds, and what she saw when her sister was in that uh, shampoo bowl, uh-huh. Uh-huh. just getting hammered. <laughs> what? Mm. <laughs> By Hank. Hank was in there. <laughs> Hank and Henry Edel was in there. And Hank and Henrietta. Henrietta. Henrietta is the sister. He had Henrietta been over that shampoo bowl. I ain't saying what they were doing, but Henrietta uh, had tied her head up since she knew he was coming down there. <laughs> and she had put her head rag on because she couldn't get her hair sweated out because she had another client coming in at 4.15. <laughs> so they was meeting at 2.30 because it was supposed to be a quickie. But she know Hank don't know how to do nothing quick. So they've been there about 40 minutes. That's why she wrapped her head up, you know, because she got that shortcut. And she tried to yeah. keep it right and everything. So they was in there. And a couple of things had started to happen in real bad because uh, Hank had hurt his knee while he was uh, doing his business back there because, you know, this dude named Waverly, he still got a curl. This old man named Waverly, he still got a curl. And so he had them little bitty pink rollers, and one of them was in the flow. And Hank, Hank got about them rollers. on that little ass pink roller, and his leg went out. Ooh. Yeah, and he fell up under that chair. And when he fell, he knocked over a bottle of Barbasol. Barbasol, that's that uh, stuff that be in men's shop that you, that blue stuff that you put the comb in, that's a disinfectant. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And that got in his eye. And then what happened? He knocked that Barbasol <laughs> over and it got in his eye, damn near like mm-hmm. liniment. So he was in the flow hollering. <laughs> and so she thought it was because she was really doing something special that time. Oh, okay. Uh-huh. But he had fell in the flow, but Hank was still connected to her. Oh, okay. Even when he fell you. in the flow, because Hank, Hank's something else, girl. Okay. He's okay. a beast. Hank, so, Hank. So the sister is watching all of this. And the sister She's looking watching. at it, she said in the letter the she wife, almost passed yeah. out. Yeah, she yeah, did. Right. She did say Because she couldn't believe her sister was getting Hank. 
because she thought she was the only one with Hank, but Hank too much man for one woman, but not enough for two. You know, that's the Bill mm-hmm. Withers song. You know, I want me some in the house man. salon now. I want to do it in the house salon now. I want all that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you're hot, Tommy. Okay, you're you bothered. Get some in your all right. Now. <laughs> All right, coming up at the top of the hour, uh, we'll have more of the Steve Harvey Morning Show right after this. It's my birthday. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Democratic leader Nancy Pelosi posted that Kevin McCarthy and many House Republicans continue to disrespect law enforcement and dismiss their heroism at the January 6th insurrection. Yesterday, during the House Select Committee hearing, Officer Henry Dunn said that no one had ever called him an N-word while wearing a Capitol Police officer uniform. Take a listen to this, please. I'm a law enforcement officer, and I do my best to keep politics out of my job. But in this circumstance, I responded, well, I voted for Joe Biden. Does my vote not count? Am I nobody? That prompted a torrent of racial epithets. One woman in a pink MAGA shirt yelled, you hear that, guys? This voted for Joe Biden. Then the crowd, perhaps around 20 people, joined in screaming, boo, No one had ever, ever called me a while wearing the uniform of a Capitol Police officer. Wow. 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 It's chilling hearing it in their own yeah. words, isn't it? I, you know? I saw his testimony uh, mm-hmm. yesterday, Officer Harry Dunn, and it was just unbelievable that these conservative GOPs, these Republicans are downplaying what happened mm-hmm. on January 6th. They're acting yeah. like it's no big deal. Yeah, you know they're what I waiting mean? for the election to next year. They think they're, you know, going to win and get back in power. That's what this is all about. All of it. So that's only that's only been one person convicted thus far. The uh, no. the one sentencing of the one guy that we that talked about I think last or... week. Yeah, yeah, Tommy got about eight months or something like that, mm-hmm. and he got that sentence because the judge said he wasn't the ringleader. Ain't that a right? Beat? Right. Well, where the ringleader? <laughs> <laughs> Let, let's get him. Where's the yeah. ring? Donald Trump. Uh-huh. <laughs> That's the ringleader. <laughs> You're so right about that. Uh, Officer Harry Dunn went on to say that the person who ordered the hit on January 6th should be arrested, just like the hit man would be in any other criminal case. Also, Officer uh, Michael Fanone confronted lawmakers for downplaying the yeah. riot. Yeah, right. and he got seriously hurt in all of this. He, he yes. that's the one that said thank you, Steve, and then blank you. Remember him? Yeah, yeah. He went off yesterday. You, you know what though, man? It's like this. Any, if this had been anybody else, yes, sir. If mm-hmm. this were just the Black Lives Matter protesters, yes, sir. This, this is not even a question of is this a crime, or should this be punished. Or did they do the, the officers wrong? It wouldn't even be a question. But the Republican Party has politicized this. Yeah. And that is the, the, the damn shameness of this country we live in. Because it is such a hypocritical ass country. They ain't nothing on paper they say they are. They don't give a damn about that judicial system it, if it affects their power and their money and their position. Yes, sir. So now, they, to hell away with all y'all, we want to stay in office. Mm-hmm. Oh, that don't make no sense, man. Yep. That don't make yep. no sense. It's none at all, none at all. And these hearings continue. I mean, they're just making it so difficult. You know, they won't call it what it is. You know, people died. It's like they're they're downplaying that and and watering it down. It, it's a disgrace, really, what they're doing. It's really Let's a go disgrace. To the... Let's go to yeah. the source. Let's go back to who started it, who sent y'all down the street, and that's mm-hmm. the person that is responsible. Oh, Forty-five. Not anything Come to on. Him. Forty-five. Forty-five. Not anything to yes. him. Yeah. 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 This is uh, like Steve said. If it was anybody else that had done this, mm-hmm. and we know this, yeah, we know what would have happened, and then they're downplaying. And who's paying for the damage to the buildings, the Capitol buildings, all that? Do we have to pay for that, taxpayers? Mm-hmm. Taxpayers. Mm. All right, we'll have more of today's trending stories and more of the Steve Harvey Morning Show coming up at 20 minutes after, right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, Shirley, so it's your birthday, girl, today. It's your birthday. It's your birthday. So what are you going to do today? 
I'm going to get cake and ice cream. You know, I'm a, a cake and a bluebell ice cream girl. I have yes. to have that on my birthday. Yes. Okay. I've had a that's lot a, that's during a the pandemic. That's a must. Yeah, it's, but I don't care. I got to get some today. Uh, I like uh, homemade vanilla. <laughs> yes. I like strawberry. I like chocolate. And I might try the banana pudding one. I haven't tried that one. But I'm not going to eat like a lot of it. I'm just going to taste a lot of it. But yeah, and I might, I think I'm going to get a strawberry cake this time. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Good thing. Mm-hmm. Well, let's okay. cut to the chase. Let's cut to the chase, what? though. Which birthday what? is this? How is this <laughs> on your nerves? How? I want to know which one it is. I mean, we celebrated. I need to know. I need a number. Which one Tommy, is it? Tommy, we've been friends forever. You know. Okay. Okay, oh. Shirley. Let whoa, me ask whoa, you this. Whoa, 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 whoa. You know what? I can't believe she sat there and said that, right? You know how old I am. <laughs> oh, okay. That's a, what? 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 That's, mm-hmm. I just shouldn't have said that? How, how old was you when, when Good Times was on? Uh, I think... Uh, t- t- was I, you yeah, driving? Nine going on ten. <laughs> was you driving when Good Times was on? Could you drive over your friend's house and watch Good Times? <laughs> to watch it? <laughs> You guys are so funny. <laughs> so funny. <laughs> Ooh, birthday girl. Tommy trying to get that age at you. I know. I know he is. <laughs> All right. Coming up, uh, more of the Steve Harvey Morning Show <laughs> at 33 minutes after, right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Time now for Ask the CLO, Chief Love Officer Steve Harvey in the building. Steve, get ready. This one is from CD in Chicago, my hometown. Uh, CD writes, I'm a 39-year-old married woman, and I had an outside child during our third year of marriage. My husband was a cheater. He cheated on me before and after we got married, and I tried to play the same game, but I was careless. I had a son, and I have fallen in love with the father of my child. My husband begged me not to leave because he's a pastor and everyone thinks we're such a perfect couple. I'm tired of living this lie. Would I be crazy to leave my husband in hopes of a fresh start with the other guy? Hmm. Well, it's one simple question you need to know. Does the other guy want to have a fresh start with you? Exactly. See? Facts. And how does he, how old is the son? Hmm. Well, it doesn't say, but she had a child on their third year of marriage. Mm-hmm. Oh, That's the yeah. only question you need to know is, does <laughs> this guy you had this affair with want to have a new start with you? Mm. That's that's the problem. See, you you want a lot of stuff, but it ain't gonna happen. That's the dilemma you have. The only dilemma you can. I I would suggest you go get a fresh start with this new guy. If the new guy wants you, does he know that's his baby? That's the other question. Exactly. Does the pastor know that he raising another man's child? Uh oh. Hello. If you want me to stay, I'll be around. <laughs> How does that call for that? <laughs> Let's slide the family stone. Really? really? Okay. <laughs> All right. All right. We're we're moving on. La Curtis and La Curtis in Jacksonville <laughs> says, uh, "La oh. Curtis, you heard me." My wife and I have an RV to visit all of our grandkids in Georgia. It's on. I got ready to tell you that's an old ass name, La Curtis. La Curtis, yeah. (laughs) It's on our side yard. Uh, It's in our side yard and out of the way. My cousin is having marital issues, so he asked to stay in my RV one night after his wife put him out. I let him stay one night in it, and he left it a total mess. I could tell he had a woman in it, and it smelled like weed. I asked him to get it professionally cleaned, but he said it was like that before he got in there. I can't have my wife in there after some bimbo has stayed there. How do I handle this CLO? Well, I mean, first of all, you got to get it clean because yeah. you let your cousin stay in there. Yep. Your cousin mm-hmm. trifle it. He ain't going to clean it. So, you know, which is the reason why he didn't put out his own house anyway. <laughs> and he come right that. over there and have another woman in there. So now... You got to clean it, and I guess you've told your wife somehow that there was a woman in here, or your wife went out there and discovered it, but you got to get the thing professionally clean. You need some new bed spreads and all that. Yep. Yeah. And La Curtis, you you know better. Right. Call, you love that name, don't you, La Curtis? Because La Henderson ain't never been worth a damn. <laughs> the cousin's, <laughs> cousin's name. <Yeah. laughs> Him or Lavelle. <laughs> 
Coming up, it is our last break of the day at 49 minutes after the hour, right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, here we are, last break of the day. We had a good day on this Wednesday. Birthday, <laughs> girl. Fun. Yes. yes. Of Did course you figure we had it a good out, day. Nephew? Yeah, it was fun. <laughs> Did you figure it out yet, nephew? I'm try- I think you was probably named after Shirley Temple. Was you named after Shirley Temple? <laughs> oh, my God. No, no young people know who that is, I'm saying right now. Okay. But I'm just asking. Okay, you're going to put me all the way back there. Okay, all right. When Mahalia sung. <laughs> when, Was I in the when, audience? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm going to kill you, okay, on my birthday. Because <laughs> you helping him write the joke now. I know. <laughs> on my birthday, I'm going to get him. <laughs> oh, so you're going to have cake and ice cream and what? Uh, cake and ice what cream, you- gifts, gifts, gifts. Gifts, gifts are coming. Uh huh. That's, oh, that's really nice. all I want. That's really all I want. <laughs> <laughs> that's all I want. I am mad you know, at that. Yeah, yeah. My my best friend Debbie is still here, hanging out with me. Oh, nice. Okay. Uh huh. So do your friends stay too long when they come? You, you be having them over too long. They be there for weeks. Why? That's a well, long I, you know, time. I love company. You know, I love company. I love company. It doesn't bother me in the least. But I'm they stay the whole like, summer, though. They be there the whole <laughs> yeah, summer. Like, and, if, and if I go to Chicago, I'll be there for the entire summer. <laughs> That's it's like an we adult do. camp. <laughs> Sleep away. Why do you Sleep. care who's at my house? <laughs> I'm just saying, it's just, it's just, it's just lot. <laughs> yeah, everybody doesn't get to stay that long, but yeah. Certain people you friend. like. Yeah, yeah you like people. hanging out yeah. with. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. cool. You know how it goes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Steve, get your nephew. I'm so no. sick of him. <laughs> no, I'm going to let him go ahead. You know, you always let him do whatever he want to do anyway without getting cussed out. I say it is. It. So, no, I'm going to just let him have oh, his way. Know. Because, Steve, you're smart. You have sense, you know. Mm-mm. No, 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 no. You have sense enough. No. So, uh-uh. no we ain't gonna so it was a TV, black or white? Uh, uh, <laughs> You want to narrow this down? I'm Give you trying to understand. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. What uh-huh. what color was the Waltons? <laughs> the who? The, the, the Waltons. The Waltons? What? Waltons. I never watched that show. <laughs> who the hell is the I Waltons? Really didn't. <laughs> John Boy. Good night, yeah, John Boy. Well, let me ask you this, Shirley. I'm from Chicago. Yeah. Whose house was you at when when uh, Neil Armstrong was walking on the moon? <laughs> Now you in it, Steve. My now mother. You I lived with my mom. Mm. <laughs> you guys. Uh, Girl, they play too much. I know. Mm. I know. I got it's no okay. One. It's my birthday. You can't make me mad. Can't make Go me ahead, mad. Go ahead, Steve. Ha, ha. Ha, ha. Was Woodstock fun? <laughs> so do you went to Woodstock? <laughs> No, I did not. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay, okay. Okay, okay. I have to take a line from my mom. Someone told when it was her birthday one day, they said, um, wow, Helen, you're that old. She said, yep, but I'm still cute, though. I'm still cute, though. My mom said that, and she was. Anyway, so what did they did, did they try to draft you? <laughs> oh, the government. For the service. <laughs> For the war. For the war. Did you go to the war? <laughs> now that's funny. Uh, no, Tommy. <laughs> they did not. Steve, okay. I know you're not finished. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Come oh, on. You know, Come I on. I know you got some. Push. Come on. Well, I'm just, you know. You all can't make me mad on my birthday. Go ahead. <laughs> okay, well. That's what friends are for. You guys okay. can say it. No did one you, else better. Did you always just drink out the colored water fountain? <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Okay. I can't top that one. I oh. can't top that one. Oh, I'm Jim <laughs> Crow. King. King. I can't top that one. <laughs> that is so, so crazy. <laughs> oh, oh, man. God. Oh, my goodness. Mm. But thank you all for acknowledging my birthday. I appreciate it. I love you guys. You know I do. Thank you all very, very much. I'm going to get full off cake today. That's probably all I'm going to eat all day. And I'll be sick, but I'm going to eat cake all day. They got blueberry where you are? 
In Atlanta? Uh huh. Yeah. Atlanta. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Plenty she, of it. She ain't on Mars. <laughs> <laughs> George. But you know they don't have it. Like they didn't have it in L.A. We didn't uh, grow up with right, it in right. Chicago. Uh, yeah. Yeah. They don't. I think don't they only have it in the South? Is that correct? Might be. Yeah. Know. Me and Carla. Me and Carla can drive to the factory. <laughs> oh really? Can you? Oh wow! Creamery in Brenham. <laughs> in yep. Brenham. Mm-hmm. Wow, that's Brenham, exciting. Texas. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, but Shirley, but you I'm... used to make your own ice cream, huh, Shirley? <laughs> that, that's what. I... <laughs> no, but my mom did, and my grandmother, <laughs> they did. You know, I don't really? cook. <laughs> I don't cook. <laughs> oh gosh, Shirley. <laughs> Shirley, was you a midwife? <laughs> <laughs> see, see, this is what happens when you have friends who are comedians. <laughs> here goes, here All right. Steve. Come on, Steve. I hear you. Well, I hear you. Well, it's just 30 seconds. I don't want to say nothing, you know. It's her birthday. Let's end on a high note, right, Steve? Yeah, yeah let's end on a high note. Shirley, you have been one of the greatest things that's happened to me in my entire radio career. And if it had not been for you, this career would not have lasted this long. As a matter of fact, it would have ended in year one. I thank you for being a stabilizing force and a true and a genuine friend over these years. And I'm finally glad you found somebody that put up with you, even though you can't cook. In Jesus' name, amen. Was that a prayer? Yeah, that's a prayer. That wasn't a prayer. Hey, y'all have a good one. Happy birthday, Shirley. We'll see y'all uh, tomorrow. For all Steve Harvey contests, no purchase necessary. Void where prohibited. Participants must be legal U.S. residents at least 18 years old unless otherwise stated. For complete contest rules, visit steveharveyfm.com. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. 